I don't know about you, but one of the most frustrating things in the health industry is when we are expected to believe something or understand something or just trust what the mainstream health media has to say without any solid explanation as to why. Here's a good example. Trans fats, okay? We're told that they're bad. We're told to avoid fast food. We're told to avoid most of the foods that are in the grocery stores because we want to stay away from trans fats. And they tell us that they're going to clog our arteries. But how come no one is truly explaining to us the simple science behind why fats work the way they do and why trans fats are really bad? Now, I'm not coming here to say that trans fats are good by any stretch of imagination, but I wanna explain to you exactly why they're bad, but I wanna explain to you also why they can be slowing down your actual health goals and your fat loss. But before I do that, I have to explain how fatty acids work a little bit in the body. You see, fatty acids are basically the metabolites of fat that you consume. They're smaller components, smaller molecules of fat. And they really do three things within the body. One, they provide energy. Two, they're building blocks of cell membranes and other materials within the body. And three, they're used to build hormones. See, a lot of times we forget that all of our hormones are built by fat and we need those fats. We have to make sure that it is a usable form of fat. And that is plain and simple. So fatty acid oxidation, or ultimately the utilization of fats, happens within the mitochondria of the cell. Now I'll save that for a different video when I explain exactly what the mitochondria is. But essentially what happens is when that fatty acid molecule is hitting the mitochondria, it is converted into something that's called acetyl coenzyme A. Now that acetyl coenzyme A helps that fatty acid either turn to ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, CO2, or H2O. Now, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy system that you need to lift weights, to exercise, or to do any kind of movement. So you can see how imperative it is that we have the right kind of fats at the right time going into the cell and being oxidized appropriately and used appropriately so that we can get the most amount of energy, especially if we're on a low carb diet and we're trying to get the body to optimize its utilization of fats. Now I know that's a mouthful, but at the end of the day, it really is pretty simple. We need to watch the kind of fats that we eat because they ultimately are converted directly into energy and they build hormones. Now essentially, from a molecular level, fatty acids are chains of carbon molecules with certain pairs of hydrogen molecules and usually an acid molecule on the end. Now that's not super important right now, but basically there's a few different types of those. You see there's saturated fats, and what saturated fats are are when there are multiple bonds of hydrogen pairs. So we have those multiple sets of hydrogen pairs, usually making it so that they're totally saturated. Then we have monounsaturated fats. Basically what that means is just like the name implies, it means we have one pair of hydrogen atoms that are not bound together, meaning we have one pair that are not saturated, monounsaturated. Then we have polyunsaturated, and just like the name implies, poly means many. And what that means is that we have many hydrogen pairs that are missing. Now, when it comes down to utilization in the body, the body utilizes saturated fats the easiest, and it also uses monounsaturated fats the easiest. Polyunsaturated fats usually aren't metabolized too well by the body. But let me explain what exactly a trans fat is and how it fits into the overall system of fats. Have you ever heard of the name hydrogenation? Or have you ever looked at a label and seen something that says partially hydrogenated corn oil or partially hydrogenated vegetable oil? Well, what that means when you think about the hydrogenation or you think about those hydrogen pairs that I just talked about, it means that they have manually injected hydrogen into a fat to make it saturated. Now, why would they do this? Well, they do this to increase shelf life. It can increase shelf life by 60 to 70%. So if you have a fat that's normally a poly or a mono unsaturated and you suddenly artificially make it saturated, well, then it is more stable. It's more shelf stable, but it also makes it more stable for deep frying, meaning companies that serve a lot of fast food and fried foods are able to use that over and over and over again without it denaturing and losing its stability. Now this is all fine and dandy, except for the fact that we have artificially added hydrogen to a fat that our body does not recognize. Our body doesn't know how to break that down. It doesn't know how to cleave off the hydrogen. It doesn't know how to cleave them off individually and utilize that fat. Now let me break it down super simple. When you have a fat that your body can't metabolize, it's just going to sit there. So the more trans fat that you consume, it literally circulates through your arteries. And unless you have amazing blood flow and amazing health, more than likely, 
those trans fatty acids are going to stay there or they're going to get deposited and when they get deposited, it's that much harder to oxidize and burn them. You see, that conversion to acetyl coenzyme A just doesn't happen with trans fats. And if it does, it takes a lot more time. So this is the real reason you wanna stay away from the trans fats. It's not just because it's gonna cause heart disease. It's not just because they're bad for you or you should just avoid fast food. There really is a reason. And if foods are meant to be a certain way, we shouldn't be mechanically altering them. Now we hear this all the time with GMOs, but people wanna turn a blind eye to GMOs because they're still vegetables, right? But when it comes to fats and we're talking about fast food, everyone is all ears. So hopefully this can be all encompassing and you can understand the severity of artificially manipulating our fats and artificially manipulating our foods. If the body can't recognize a fat that's been mechanically altered, then there's a lot of reasons why it can't recognize fruits and vegetables that have been mechanically altered as well. So I really wanna encourage you to look at your labels. Look at the ingredient list for those partially hydrogenated oils. Look at the ingredient list for hydrogenated fats in general and look for trans fats. In fact, they are now saying that on our labels that has to indicate if they contain trans fats. It's that bad. Oh, and one more thing. To make matters worse, trans fats have now been linked to an increase in lipoproteins and triglycerides. Triglycerides are sort of the precursor to deposited fats, usually that translation of carbohydrates by the liver into fat. So we actually are showing an increase in triglycerides and lipoproteins, which is now a clear indicator that trans fats can have a link to diabetes, but can also have a link to stored body fat and higher levels of body mass index. As always, I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to be aware of what you're putting in your body because if you perform at your best and you perform your best in the kitchen and you make the right choices when you're eating out, that is gonna translate into every aspect of your life. Exercising restraint in the kitchen and in a restaurant translates to restraint in the office, restraint with your family that's allowing you to be the best version of yourself. So as always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you in the next video.